In this video, I'm going to show you the secondary concept of the air raid, uh, and what I would argue is the most important secondary concept that you can learn, and that is the four verticals approach out of a two by two spread. The reason that the four verticals is so good is because it has an answer for every single defense that you're going to face in this game. We're going to get, show you how to run this against man, against zone, against match. Uh, we're going to show cover four, cover three, cover two, and just show you how to use this coverage to really push the, the, the defense back and get them to have to go into something like a cover four drop style defense when defending you. Now, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. I upload videos like this every single day that can help you become a better Madden player. I'm a little bit sick today on uh, here we are December 23rd and I am a little bit sick as we're getting close to Christmas so uh, please forgive me if my voice is a little raspy uh, but I really wanted to do some of these videos today for you because I've been really working hard on just kind of learning some of the principles of the air raid again and just kind of enjoying running it so uh, I did write I did just release my uh, my full air raid offensive ebook on my patreon so if you want to get access to that um, just join the Patreon. There's a link in the description. By joining the Patreon, you're not only going to get access to the Air Raid ebook. We're in the Arizona Playbook, by the way, um, today. But you're not only going to get access to the Air Raid uh, material, you're also going to get in immediate access to every Madden 22 offensive and defensive ebook that I've released. Um, so there's a lot, a lot of content for you in that regard. Okay, guys. So uh, when we talk about four verticals, um, I really like to util utilize the spread flex. Um, and the reason why is because I think it has the best vertical um, kind of play. Um, the, the standard four verticals actually don't run that. Uh, I would rather run uh, the drive, and then I'm just going to turn it into four verticals. Because if you look at this four verticals here in this um, breakdown, I just don't like the way that the route stems out of that tight end position. Um, the same is true if you take a look here. Um, the four verticals in this side. I mean, it's good, but I don't like to have that post. I really don't. Uh, that post kind of doesn't really do what I want it to do. And this year, uh, specifically, this route to the tight end is not as good as it's been in years past. It's still good, and I break it down in the ebook and how to utilize it. You can use it, but the one that I really prefer is drive because you see this vertical route uh, to the left of screen slot receiver. That's the route um, that you're going to be able to throw that against any coverage in the game. Okay, so the way that I like to run verticals um, is I like to run this play with the ball on the left side hash mark. Um, or, uh, wait a minute. Actually, it doesn't really matter. I'll show you, I'll, but I'll show it on this one. It really doesn't matter. You can do it on either one. Um, but the reason that I like this play and how we're going to utilize this is we're going to take the tight end, we're going to put him on a streak, we're going to put the circle receiver on a curl, we're going to put the square receiver on a fade, and then we're going to put the running back on either an out route, an in route, or an angle route, or Texas pattern. Now my preferred route is the out route, I think it's the best way to beat man, I find that the out route does better than the man, the, than the, um, oh, the route, uh, the in route. And then also the curl, what it does is it gives us a curl flat check down if things don't work out. Now, um, the way four verticals typically works is if you're getting a look like this, they would actually tag this or they might, um, you know, tell the receiver that if that guy gets back pedal, then you're going to cut it off and turn it into a comeback pattern. You could run a comeback too um, if you want to. Um, I like to go ahead and just put a curl out there. I think it works the best. So this is my preferred way to run it. Um, and what's going to happen here is you're going to see that this, because the running back is on the right side of the screen, you're going to see that these yellow zones will open up to that side. And I can turn, I can basically cut these, um, these seams off, if you will. So um, you'll see here, it's actually fairly quick to set up. Uh, and then here you can throw this tight end seam immediately. So what you're going to have is typically they're going to have to basically choose which one they're going to go guard. So let's say, for example, they're going to go to the right side and they're going to guard the tight end streak, okay? Because they're going to have to choose one or the other one. They can't guard both of them. Well, obviously, a cover four to me is the best coverage uh, against this. But what you're going to see here is there's a little shot area right there that you can cut off. Um, and I can also wait on this just a little bit longer 
and try to cut this off. Like I said, cover for a drop is by far the best coverage for for verticals, just the way that I like to run it, okay? Um, and so you can easily check down to your curl flat or your comeback route on the right if you want to. Um, if they, if, again, if they, if, they, if they open to the slot side, then don't be afraid to throw that. That right there is open all day, okay? Um, so don't be afraid to throw that. If you wanted to, you, this is another reason why, um, you know, if you want to put the running back on this route, that pull the user, and then you can hit these seams, okay? These seams are so fun to run, I have to tell you that. So they are definitely a fun route uh, to utilize, okay? But I also want to show something else here. So if they're running that cover four, what you should see here is there's going to come a point at which you, can, you these safeties are going to kind of depart each other, and you can kind of cut this off. Now, it's a risky throw. You're typically not going to get that kind of animation, but there is kind of a key point in the cover four. And again, it's going to take some lab work on your part. Now, cover three and cover two are much easier to beat with this read. Um, but there is a key point in cover four where you can kind of, like, right when he backpedals, just like that. And, and again, I'm kind of butchering the user catch. But you can basically cut this seam route off if you want. Okay? Um, again, this is assuming that their user does not go to the running back side. Um, because if this is their user right here and they're leaving this, there is so much we can do to attack a cover four. Okay, there's so much other things that we can get to. But I wanted to start with cover four because I would say that this is definitely the hardest coverage, especially if they try to open they open themselves up to that three wide receiver side and then they have a hook curl like that. You're going to see kind of right when he back paddles right there, you can kind of cut this off. See that right there? That's kind of what I'm talking about. Okay. So mess around with that. You can lab that up if you want. Um, I do want to just show this real quick. So let's say they are going with that idea. If they're going to do it like so, then what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to just simply check it down to your curl. Just check it down to your curl. If you get a look like that, it's a drop eight cover four. Just check it down to your curl. Um, another route that is always 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 open in the air raid is the running back route um, so if you want to as long as they don't user it which they shouldn't um, don't be afraid to just take that little five yard mean we'll get it out quick okay so don't be afraid to take that um, the next coverage I want to talk about those cover three you're gonna see that this play is gonna get significantly better against cover three so cover three what you're gonna have is a safety is gonna essentially his job is to split uh, these two seams. And typically he's going to kind of shift, if you will, uh, to that triangle side uh, or to the wide side. So, or to his ball side. So like right here, if you were, if you do something like this, again, they're going to have to open up. So just like cover four, they're going to have to carry that number, that guy vertical, that tight end. If they don't, as Gilmore is killing this tip, um, if they don't, you can throw your tight end. I'll show you real quick. So if they don't, if they don't carry that tight end vertical, pass lead inside, click on secure catch. Okay, really easy. If they do carry your tight end vertical, okay. So let's say that they're in cover three, uh, and then they take this guy and they carry him vertical. Okay. If that's the case kind of similar to cover four. I would just check it down to your curl flat um, right there, okay? Now, another thing I wanna quickly point out about cover three, okay? Especially if it looks kind of like this and just anticipating that they're gonna take away that tight end. This route to triangle, as long as he doesn't get jammed, you can pass lead, you see how high that hook curl took it? And if, and if that hook curl doesn't carry it like he did. I mean, typically he won't because typically he's going to be in a Mabel. So if they're in something like this, that's kind of the typical defense you're going to get in head-to-head. -head, okay? That's where this can really become handy because now there's nobody in the middle of the field to take this. Except I guess this guy's going to match on to him for whatever reason. And then you can obviously check it to your curl or check it down okay 
Now the other thing that I wanted to talk about is um, against cover three because of the fact that you're going to get a lot of Mabel coverage they won't jam if they if they're running zone drops they won't get a press on the triangle receiver so what you should see here is something like that okay so it's a very good play against cover three very good play against cover four um, and it's really best though against cover two and the reason why it's so good against cover two is because you're really going to put them in a position where they have to, um, basically they have to use the triangle receiver. So like right here, you're going to see, as Brady gets completely bagged, um, you're going to see that that triangle route is going to get open. So if I go to cover two, even if I, you know, put a lot of adjustments on the field to try to stop the curl flat read on the back side of this, I'm still going to have to carry this route no matter what. And if I don't carry it, it's an inside pass lead, and you're gonna be able to click on and make that play with Godwin. Let me show that again. Okay, so again, cover two. And I'm gonna show you something else about cover two in just a second. So what you'll see is like kind of right in here, he actually got matched. If he gets matched, honestly, if he gets matched, you'll have a step on him. You can, you can kind of try it, um, to be honest. Typically, he won't get matched. Most people in this game don't use standard zones. They use uh, zone drops. But you'll see kind of right there. That seam will open up. And this is an important play in the air raid. Why? Most of the time, I will tell you this. Most of the time, you're going to be checking this down. You're going you're gonna to run this play, and you're going to be like, why do I run this? I just throw this all the time. But what that does is it opens everything up, okay? Because if they start doing something that looks like what I'm about to show you, something that looks like this, this defense really is not going to be able to guard this concept, okay? So when they start running stuff like this and you go to this, you can hit the running back there. You can hit the inside pass lead to Gronk. You can hit the seam on the left. You have three different reads that you can hit. If they go to Tampa 2 and they play some kind of like, you know, some kind of soft squad or something on the outside here, what you're going to also see is if they're getting aggressive and heavy pressure, what you'll see here is this little fade to the left side always opens this up to Godwin. Okay? Always, always opens that up. Now, if you're in a situation where... Um, like let's say you're in a situation where they're playing like traditional uh, cover two, then what you should see is this little fade is gonna get an outside release. You're gonna pass through that to the left, and as you can see, we could beat that traditional cover two uh, to the outside. Now if they're in sync, like cover two sync, which means they're in soft squat logic, what should happen is they should match this fade to the left so they're gonna match that fade to the left but now in the middle of the field you've still got your seam over the top so that is kinda of how I handle cover two now the last thing that I wanted to go over actually I got two more things I want to go over first is match coverage so how do we handle match coverage in four verticals well match coverage was really designed to try to handle majority of what four verticals has to offer so typically you're just gonna check it down to your curl flat Okay, why I love the curl flat read is because against man and against coverages that are designed to handle four verts, now I can do something like this, and as you can see, I can just easily take what the defense gives me. So that's pretty much how I handle man-to-man, -man, how I handle match. Uh, you might say, well, how do you handle the pressure? Well, the way that I handle the pressure is basically the same. If it's zone pressure, we're going to read the seam. So looking boom, boom, okay, that's not there. Okay, we're going to go right there quick. And really what the air raid is about, if you think about it, is you don't have, it's not an offense that's designed that the bomb is your first read. You're going to go through your progressions, and typically you're going to check this ball down. 
because you're stretching the defense horizontally and you're stretching the defense vertically. So you're going to have a lot of underneath routes open, like crossing routes, little quick back routes, stuff like that. That keeps the offense on schedule. It's very safe. And it gets the ball into players that are fast in space that can make moves. So it's a very safe offense. And what's going to happen is the defense is going to get over aggressive. They're going to try to make a big play. And then your vertical stretches are going to become wide open, which we're going to talk about in a future video. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it a little bit longer than I thought. But I hope this gave you a little bit of an understanding of how I like to run the four verticals. Just a basic uh, six, four verticals call. Um, again, it's like the, it's the, corner, the two cornerstones of two major foundations of this offense. In my opinion, the first one is mesh. The second one has to be the four vertical concept. So thanks for watching the video. And we'll see you guys later. If you want to learn the rest of the offensive ebook, be sure to join the Patreon. And remember, by joining the Patreon, you get access to all of my Madden 22 material on my offensive and defensive ebooks. So if you're watching this and you want to join the Patreon, there's a link in the description below that you can click that'll take you right over to the website and we can get you all squared away.